Well, good morning. We're back in my shop again for another session of uh, regulation and partial action rebuilding on this nice Steinway B. And last time we got a lot of things underway, including cleaning and lubricating the key frame and uh, working with the keys themselves. So we're going to uh, continue on with that. I've started putting some of the keys back on the key frame just to get this underway. Now you'll recall that uh, we had put brass blocks um, and a special solution in each of the key bushings so that they could be rejuvenated. And uh, I'll go ahead and take these brass blocks out now. I actually had to replace a couple of these bushings, but uh, almost all of them are just in great shape still. And now I'm going to put this on my other workbench so I can get the keys out, but I'll just be bringing them right back again. Place them all back on. They feel really nice too as I'm putting them back on again. The lubricated pens feel great. I like the way a nice clean action frame looks with all the keys back on it and no stack. You can really see the way these levers work. With the stack on, this is all these cap stands are depressed and the keys are up in the front. So it's just a matter of working this little lever to work the entire piano action. I'm going to move the action frame over to my other desk and we'll put the stack back on here so you can see how I've replaced the hammers. These hammers came uh, back to me via UPS just the other day, so I went ahead and got this started and put several of them on. Now I mentioned before how flattened and deeply grooved these hammers uh, were from this action. I have a set of hammers here in my shop that was replaced on a, another Steinway B about 10 years ago. So these hammers were deeply worn and grooved after only 10 years of use. You can see they're a little flattened on the side. And this set of hammers was prepared by Steinway in the Steinway factory. So they uh, shaped the tails. Uh, they didn't taper the tails. We're going to talk about that in a minute. These, these came from a Steinway factory. I didn't like this set of hammers as well as I like the hammers that, I, that I'm going to be putting on this piano. These hammers were prepared by my parts preparer my supplier, and uh, th this is a brand new Steinway hammer that's going to be going on this piano right now. Um, in preparation to put these on the piano, each hammer has to be custom bored, so the, the holes have to be at the right angle as you put it on the piano. You can see these hammers are angled this way to meet with the bass strings. These are angled back the other way a little bit, and then you get through here, it's pretty much 90 degrees uh, glued directly onto the flange. But each of those holes is custom drilled, and then the hammers themselves have to be tapered. The tails of the hammers have to be tapered so that they meet with the back checks properly. And the people that I'm using now to get these parts ready also weigh each hammer at the end of each section, and they um, take off the amount of wood necessary to get the weight the same as the hammers that came off the piano in the first place. And that saves a lot of time and helps the piano action feel a lot more even as you move forward. So I've placed about 80 of these hammers back on the action and you'll get to see me do the last portion of this right now, the way I do this. You may remember that these screws were pretty tight coming out, so each screw, these hammers are also numbered in case they get lost, there's a little number on each hammer so you can make sure you get them back in the right place. I'm putting a little bit of Protec lube on the threads of each one of these screws, just a tiny little dab to help them go in more easily. I have glued 
and drilled hammers myself in the past, but uh, these guys have all the right jigs and are set up to do such a nice job that I just have this done. You may remember that I removed the screws using an electric screwdriver, at least to a great degree, but when I'm putting screws back in, I usually like to just do it by hand because you can feel what's going on. And if you get cross-threaded with an electric screwdriver, you're going to cause yourself some problems. And I'm just getting these pretty close to generally in the right spot. There will be another portion of the regulation we'll do back in the shop, back in the studio, where I uh, get all the hammers regulated properly to the strings. So we're roughing them in, but not really roughing them. We're getting a lot closer than, than rough. There will be more steps later on, though. This is a hammer that came off of that piano, that, that came off of this action. So this was an original Steinway hammer from 1980. This is what they were doing in 1980. And uh, you can see that the, the tapering is not nearly as smooth. They used to put uh, lines on the, on the tails, supposedly to help check with the back checks more efficiently though people don't do that anymore. You can see the number on this side. Um, this was from the end section. Next step, we're going to put the keyframe back on the workbench. And with the Steinway action thing, you always have to remember when you're doing this is to put the monkey back under the monkey spring. Because once you screw this down, you can't do that. And when I'm screwing an action down... Oh, look at that. I usually take the screw and I back it up a little bit. I, I turn counterclockwise so you can feel it drop into the grooves that are already there. If you just start screwing down directly, you might end up uh, cross-threading it. hear that drop in there. Let's listen again. Now that we have the action stack back on the action, we have to start by making sure that the jacks or the flies are aligned properly with the, with the core of the knuckle. These are brand new knuckles. They're all on the brand new uh, shanks and flanges with the brand new hammers. So the, the next step is to make sure that this jack is aligned properly with the, uh, the core of the knuckle. And the back face of the jack should al line up with the back face of that knuckle right there. That should be a straight line. So we're going to take a look at that. This one actually is just about exactly right. And with these high-end custom parts, usually things do line up pretty well. But when you're putting new, uh, new flanges on, sometimes there's more regulation than others. So I'm going to take this, I'm actually going to move this a tiny little bit. I'm going to screw this felt pad back a bit to allow that knuckle, that jack to go back a tad bit. Now I've got a better line between the knuckle core and the jack. We're going to go to the other end of this section. So now I have the two ends. This is the top of the jack. Right there is the top of the jack, that little square, that green square. So I have those two ends, these two jacks right where I want them. There are several different ways you can align the knuckles. I've tried doing uh, pieces of straight thread, uh, using rulers. Um, there are special tools that you can get for doing this, but I found that a straight edge is, is really the way I like to go with this. So I've got a straight edge here, and I'm going to look at the tops of these. You can see the top of this one and the top of this one. You can see where those are, and the rest of, the, the rest of these need to line up with those. So you can see in here, if you look closely, there's a couple right here in the middle that are too far towards the back of the action. Now these first two here look just right, that looks just right. This I'm going to need to go in to my little screw, and I'm going to turn this a little bit to move that back. Okay, that's better. This one needs to be moved back a little bit too. 
you can see that this uh, goes too far under our straight edge so it's probably not aligned quite right and we'll check these again later but this is the first getting this in just about the right spot this does most of it this is really pretty darn accurate all right that's where I like it right there the next step in regulating is another step of regulating the fly or jack and this is uh, actually we're going to regulate the repetition this is the repetition lever right here and we're going to regulate that so that these two little arms on the edges will hold up the hammer they'll they'll interface with the knuckle and this little square the end of the jack will slide back and forth underneath that knuckle with the lightest amount of friction or resistance so the way to do that for starters is make sure that that the arms of the of the repetition lever are just slightly above that jack and I just do this by touch and these first two have really been just right this one needs to needs to come up a little bit more so I'll back this off a tad bit because you want these you want the jacks to be able to go in and out underneath the knuckles um, freely but you also want them to be touching the knuckles when they're under there so that you don't have any lost motion and all these different little details uh, just help with the touch and help the pianist have uh, as great of control over the movement of the hammer towards the strings as they possibly can. And I've been doing this for a long time, so I have a pretty good sense of, of touch of what I'm going for, and it, which results in a very playable action. All right, N normally I'd be doing that to the whole action too. We're just going to stick with the the top section as I said. All right now the next step we're going to get the card if you'll think back if you'll think back to our first session uh, in the studio we took measurements out of the action and we put those measurements on this card we punched these holes. This represents the string height of the piano in the studio. This is my string height replication tool here. Okay so Let's see where we were. We'll go to the top. This is the last hole punched. So that's the top of the action right there. go to the second hole which is the bottom of the top section right here it's pretty close that's going to come up a tiny little bit Double check the top again. Just right. And now we have an idea of where those strings would be located. This is where we can get a chance to see how how close things are with the new parts on there and there's a lot that's going to need to be done here but you can expect that because these new hammers are longer than the old flat hammers so things uh, are going to be different now ooh, that one actually feels kind of good so maybe when we get things uh, We know it's going to feel great when we're done. The next step is to regulate the hammer blow distance. This is a, a jig that I made. Uh, it's one and three fourths inches, which is Steinway's um, standard rough measurement for the distance from the hammers to the strings. 
And this is, so all these are a little too far away. This one's a, a little bit closer, it's a little bit high. It's kind of interesting. So now I'll set down in my regulation chair, a chair I've had for 40 years probably. And a lot of times we have to go over some of these things a second time. When I, uh, when I get the repetition lever springs adjusted, sometimes that has a little bit of effect on the hammer line. Um, if you didn't adjust your repetition lever height relative to the jack tip already, that would impact the hammer line too. So we're going to get this pretty darn close. It's kind of roughing it in, but it's getting it very close with an action like this. If you had all new action parts, you'd go over every action regulation point at least twice. Wants to get it close and wants to finish things out. And the same is true with tuning pianos. If they're very more than just a few cents out of tune, you have to go over the piano twice. Wants to get it close and the second time to fine tune it. If we hadn't um, put the rejuvenating fluid on the abstract felt at the bottom of the repetition levers, um, we would have to turn these a lot more. They'd be a lot lower. That expanded that felt back out again. And oftentimes, if I'm regulating an action and using the same parts on it, I have to turn these the other way to lower the hammers a little bit if I've rejuvenated the abstract felt. And generally speaking, in my shop, when I'm working on an action, I'm listening to music. And oftentimes it's music, it's piano related music. Because I have a radio program too called All Things Piano on KHOI 89.1 FM right here in Ames, Iowa. And after this gets uh, messed around with a little bit more and played a little bit, this will change a tad bit and we can refine it some. I think we're pretty good right now though. Okay, so I've got the hammer distance set at one and three quarters inches on this top section. And then the next things that we're going to adjust are the let off and the drop. And with new parts, that can sometimes be a little bit a little bit trickier. You have to find out where you're at with the new parts. This is the drop screw that I'm adjusting here. And it the drop screw uh, has a little cap stand on it that pushes down at the top uh, and when you're raising the hammer up the repetition lever interacts with that screw so it, it indicates or dictates how far down the hammer will go but before that happens you have to have the let off set properly and over on this side of the action is the let off button There we go. Now I can feel all this as I'm going through. Oh, that's starting to feel pretty good. Oh, yeah. So with these new parts, it looks like, at least with this first one, I have to adjust the lead off up higher. So what I've done is adjust this cap stand here. This is the lead off button, and it pushes on the back side of the jack or the jack tail. What I've done here is adjust the let off button, this screw right here, which interacts with the back of the jack or the jack tail. As you're moving, the, moving through the action, this button pushes the jack back and it pushes, so the jack is under the knuckle all the way until the hammer gets to within about a millimeter from the strings and then it interacts with the jack tail, pushing the jack out from underneath it. So before the hammer actually touches the strings, you're no longer in direct contact with it. You're just gently tossing the hammer towards the strings. That's called double escapement. And that was kind of the, the big innovation that made the modern piano or piano forte what it is, is the ability to play soft or loud. So you want to get the, the hammer to come right up to the strings, one to two millimeters away, depending on where you're at in the action, and then drop 
about another millimeter before, and there's some other regulations we'll do in here later, but... And, and when you get used to it, you can just feel that. You can feel the jack coming out from under the knuckle, and with that brand new knuckle felt, that nice new leather, that just has a nice, soft, smooth feel. Just, uh, that feels pretty good. So now that we've got this roughed in and have a general idea of what we're going to be getting, we'll go back through and start uh, adjusting the rest of these, I think. And here the let off button is so high that, I mean, the, here the drop screw is so high that we can't uh, feel what we want to feel. So I'm going to have to go over this whole thing twice anyway. Okay, so we've got all of that pretty well where we want it. And Steinway's key dip is supposed to be around 390 thousandths of an inch. And this is all, almost all of this is too deep. Um, there's a range, um, 390 to 400 along in there. And I've been using this key dip block for uh, 20 years or more. Like this one's about right. But these are too deep. This comes down too far. And uh, when I was talking about aftertouch, I can feel that uh, there's a little bit more aftertouch here than the advanced pianist would like to have. So, uh, so what I'm going to do is get out some key punchings. You know, you'll recall we were using uh, key punchings under the center rail, these little round ones, and each one has a different thickness. Each color has a different thickness, but now we're going to be using the large ones under the front rail. Normally, if we were just regulating this and we weren't putting new parts on it, I would be removing punchings rather than putting punchings underneath. But in this instance, we're going to put some punchings underneath. You see, there's a whole pile of them uh, under, under each key on the key rail. First, there's the paper punchings, and then there's the cloth. But since this comes down too far, I'm going to put some punchings under there. We'll try about three of these. These are ten one thousandths of an inch each, I think. That's going to be about right. Oh, yeah, I like that. And that improves the feel, the whole feel of the key, too. So I'm just pressing down on the key dip block to see how far down it goes relative to the keys next to it. Now you'll recall that we leveled all these keys in an earlier session. So these keys are all leveled out and uh, I can feel that there's a little bit of too much dip there, about 30 thousandths of an inch. We'll go like that, or 30 hundredths, yeah, 30 thousandths of an inch. We just do the front rail, or I mean the white keys first, and then I'll do the, the black keys after I do the white keys. That's about four, probably. Now, to adjust the key depth, which is around 390 thousandths of an inch, I use this block. You can see this key dip block is a little bit thinner at the back than it is at the front, and that helps replicate the same angle of the key as it's completely depressed. So I put this key block on the depressed key, and what I want to do is I want to have the depth of that um, proper so that uh, it is level with the keys next to it, and that gives me the right amount of depth. So that's the right amount of distance that this lever goes uh, from its top point to its bottommost point needs to go about 390 thousandths of an inch for uh, the action to cycle through properly. And when you do that, you can just feel how this action is cycling through properly. But when this one's a little bit too deep, uh, the action cycles through and then the key keeps going a little bit farther than you want it to. And that's called aftertouch. You don't want to have too much of that. You want to have some, but you don't want to have too much. And the pianist, the advanced 
piano player can really feel uh, key depth a lot. That's something that they're very aware of. Whether they, are, whether they know they're aware of it or not, it's something they feel. Okay, I got that a little bit too shallow, so I'm going to take out two more of these. And boy, they feel good too. You guys can't feel this, but these feel very nice. Okay, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and uh, do the black keys. And the way we do this is, is more by touch than anything else. So I'm gonna feel the amount of, of aftertouch that I have in the white key on either side. Two punchings on that one. Got to do this with the tweezers. And another thing you want to make sure when you're working with your black keys is the black key should not go down uh, between all the way between the white keys. There should be some height. Even when this is completely depressed, it needs to be slightly above the uh, surface of the white keys and on some poorly regulated pianos these will go down so far that you know your your finger ends up touching the white key even when you're playing the black key when you get used to playing a well-regulated grand piano it just makes a big difference i have some customers who have uh, relatively nice pianos that are very poorly regulated and, and I'll talk with somebody about it uh, once or twice, but if they don't want to spend the money to have it regulated, that's up to them. I like to let people know. I'm not trying to get them to do something they don't want to do, but I want them to know that it's possible for their piano to play better than it does in many instances. So much of this work is, uh, for me, done um, because of my decades of experience in regulating many dozens if not hundreds of, uh, of grands, many of them high-end grands like Steinways or better Yamahas, or Mason and Hamlins. And in our town, the very rare but occasional Bosendorfer, we don't have a lot of those in the Midwest here. Now the real the real feel is going to be when we get this back in the piano. Now that I've got the uh, after touch and key depth adjusted, I'm going to go back through and do the drop one more time because this impacts how far, how far down the front of this key goes impacts how close the hammer is to the strings at the end of, a, uh, of the note cycling through it's the action. So we'll go back and adjust that one more time. And I knew I was going to need to do that. These are pretty small and fine adjustments, but the, the ultimate goal is to make the action as even as it can possibly be so that the player knows what to expect every time they press a key down. And now the next step is going to be going to the back checks. And we're going to rough these in too, but part of this is going to be uh, quite possibly changed a little bit when we get back to the studio. Now these back checks are... Uh, 40 years old, you'll recall, and they're a little bit worn on the edges too. So I'm going to take a nice sharp blade and I'm going to rough these up where the spots are worn down a little just to nap that up. On a complete rebuild of an action, you might be putting new back checks on, but it's, you have to draw the line somewhere because of expense and things like this. In um, regulating really old piano actions of uh, pianos of lesser quality, sometimes you need to take an extra piece of felt and stick it between the leather and the uh, the deep felt of the back check to um, to curve that back out again. But that's not I've never seen that necessary on a Steinway piano. These are uh, at this end of the action. These are all pretty square. We're, we need to make sure that the uh, 
the angle of the back check it matches the angle of the back of the hammer but everything is night pretty much 90 degrees here so we don't have to worry about that so what we do have to worry about is uh, where the the t um, back check is relative to the tail of the piano you want the back check to interface with the entire piano or hammer tail if you can so that might need to be moved over a little bit but the thing we're gonna have to be sure of is that these hammers are where they need to be relative to the strings when we get the piano back in so I'm gonna take a look at this let's see where these were before and I'm not gonna worry about that too much right now because I'll probably worry about that later and the back checks are pretty well spaced among themselves. So what we're going to worry about right now is getting the hammers to back check at the appropriate spot relative to the strings. So you, you basically want the hammer to be is, uh, to back check after it's cycled through the action, all the way through, up through the let off and the drop, it comes back down and hits the back check. You want that to be um, pretty much as close to the strings as you can get it. Uh, a little more than half an inch probably. We'll put this back here to judge our string height. But a problem might arise. So what I'm doing is I'm bending the back check wires forward like this. There are times when you can bend them sideways and I have a special tool for that. But right now I'm just bending the back check wires forward so that the back check itself is closer to the hammer. And if you bend it too much, you get to the point where on a, a firm hammer blow, it interacts with the felt and um, grabs it on its way up. So the way to test for that is by putting a little pressure on the hammer as you cycle through the key to make sure that it's not, not grabbing it on its way up. That's great, man. That's good. So we're going to go for that for the most part. We're going to do a few more of these. See, that goes way down. This is the one I've regulated or adjusted. This is the one I haven't. It's way down there. So we're going to bend this wire forward towards the piano player. Get that pretty close. So I'm roughing these all in right now. Now we're going to check the uh, repetition lever springs. And you may recall that we used a special tool to take these springs out of their slots or grubs. We may not have to do that with very many of these because we took the springs all out. I'll show you one more time. And we uh, buffed and lubricated them and then we cleaned out the grub on the bottom of this repetition lever with a special tool that looks like a dentist's tool. Okay, so now we're going to see how that spring responds. And it's supposed to, after the back checking, after the hammer back checks, the repetition lever spring is supposed to push the hammer up smartly to the point of, of uh, drop, basically. So that, that's really just about right. I don't need to do anything with that. That one's a little bit, too, well, we'll feel a couple more of these. This is a little bit too brisk. See how it pops up so quickly compared to this one. We'll do these. This one pops up pretty fast. So I'm going to take this spring out. Since we cleaned these out, um, some of them are going to work a little bit better than they did before. Take the spring out, and I'm just going to push it down at the coil to weaken it just a little bit. That's better. That one's a little bit weak. See, it barely comes up at all. So we're going to pull that spring out. And we're going to strengthen it by pulling up on it a little bit. That's a little bit weak. That 
one's barely rising at all. It's not, not coming up. We can jiggle it up. It doesn't want to come up on its own, so that's too weak. We'll remove it. see what else we need to get done here. This is most of what we need to do here. Okay, well that uh, getting the repetition lever springs regulated was the last step we're going to do today in the shop. So we've gotten this top section regulated uh, pretty well, roughed in uh, to a great degree. We'll be doing a few more steps in the studio when we get back there, but this is about where I want this piano action to be uh, when I take it back to the piano itself. I'll be doing the rest of that action over the weekend. Uh, but I just love the way this feels. You can just feel that knuckle um, going across that jack. You can feel the hammer go down to the back jacks and rise at just the right amount with the right amount of spring in there. You know, doing that prep work up front really makes a difference. I think uh, cleaning those grubs and buffing those uh, repetition lever springs really helps even things up a lot. So I'm glad we take those steps. And these new hammers are so well prepared that everything's going to go quite smoothly from here on out. So see you next time back in the studio. Mm -hmm.